I am Dennis from Respect Studios and in this tutorial I'm going to show you how you can make a magnet uh, attraction and repelling force added by one object to another so it will be a simple scene so I'm going just to just show you the concept you can use it later for your projects uh, with some updates or I don't know so let's get started this is a clean scene I'm going to do this tutorial a little slightly different so in the last tutorials I've been doing them from scratch while I report while while I'm recording the video and uh, in this tutorial I have done already everything so I'm just going to rewrite it and explain everything uh, this way I guess it will happen faster and I'm not going to go back and forth many times so first let's create our magnet 3 objects our magnet will be a simple cube we're going to reset its transform so it's at 0 0 0 we're going to select our camera and put it to negative 20 the magnet will be set to 5 units in Y and uh, our camera will be set to 30 field of view will be set to 30 so we can see this will be our magnet and we want to make our magnet to move from 7.5 to negative 7.5 this way we will have some movement for this case we are going to make a script C sharp script and we're going to call it magnet actions C sharp let's put the script on our magnet double click the script to open it in mono develop and uh, let's make this slightly smaller okay i'm going to remove all this i will need it but later uh, first of all we're going to say script for managing magnet movement public variables private variables we need public vector 3 new position this will be the target position uh, then we have private transform which we call trans this will hold this then transform okay in the awake function we're going to say trans to be equal to transform okay now the this is now referencing the transform so we don't have to call it every time we need the transform we're going to say in our update function trans that position to be equal to vector 3 dot lerp and we're going to say we're going to learn from current position to new position with time delta time multiplied by 1.5 uh, you can multiply it to whatever you want i'm just multiplying to 1.5 so i have slightly slight movements and not so fast now uh, after that what we want to do is say if mat have that abs new position that x we're going to to be moving the magnet in x so we can check x only minus trans that position that x is less than 0 0.05 we're going to say trans that position that actually not that to be equal to new position now we need this piece of code because usually when we do lerping this way it will never reach the new position it will go like point nine 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 and it will continue slowly so we are we're simply saying if the new position minus trans position so if new position is 10 
the, the target position that we want if, if it's 10 and we are slurping from the current position to a new position we're moving toward the new position okay so if the transit position is 0 and new position is 10 we're talking about the x for, uh, for at the moment when we start moving the cube it will go closer and closer to new position and when it goes to uh, 9.95 or 9.96 the new position that x which is 10 minus 9 uh, transform that position that x which will be 9.9 x 96 uh, will the result will be 0 0.04 so it will be smaller than 0 0.05 and the and we're going to snap the position to the new position i'm going to show you how that works in just a moment Actually, let me see, we're aiming 5, because we want the cube to be 5 in Y, and uh, 7.5 in X. So now if we hit play, the cube is going there. Now, I want to show you, I'm going to comment this out, what happens if we don't have that uh, these two lines of code. The cube pay attention to the x value of the cube i'm going to say okay it's 6.4 at the moment it's going to 7 i'm going to unpause for a moment okay 7.43 and now you can see 7.45 and even if i unpause you can see that it's going 7.49999 and it continues continues it never goes to 7.5 so with these two lines of codes, I'm telling that if it goes above 7.96, it will snap to the new position, which will be 7.5. So if I play again now, you can see 7.33, it goes to 7.5, yeah, it snapped. So I'm going to play that again, just so you can see. Okay, 7.2, 7 7.3, 7.4, 7.44, 7 and 7.5, and then it snaps to 7.5. So this way you can avoid, like you can avoid having to that movement to continue all the time. Okay, our magnet movement is ready. Now we need to add. Uh, physics rigid body to our I'm going to move that down and we're going to make the phys the rigid body kinematic we're going to call this magnet and uh, actually we need one tag which will be called magnet and we're going to tag the magnet cube and let's drop it down to the prefabs so we have it as a prefab okay our magnet seems to be ready now we need one empty object which will be set to 5 in y in 7.5 ax we're going to add physics box collider and we need one script for that object this object will be changing the direction the the, the target X for the for the magnet, so you can move uh, C sharp magnet change direction C sharp. We're going to call it magnet change direction. We're going to drop it on the prefabs, and we're going to apply a script to it. Magnet change direction C sharp script. Now this script will be fairly simple we're going to delete all this here we'll say public vector tree magnet direction and then void on trigger enter collider order we're going to say if other that 
tag equals magnet. This is why we target the magnet. I'm going to say other that get component magnet actions that new position to be equal to magnet direction. Now when when the magnet gets triggered from the when the magnet gets in the zone of the magnet change direction we're going to say the new direction will be 5 again so we're going we're keeping the same y and we're going to say negative 7.5 we're going to apply this to the prefab duplicate it and move it to negative 7.5 and with this we will say the magnet direction will be 7.5 now when the magnet goes here it will change direction to negative 0.5 if you go here when it goes here it will change direction and it will go to the other side so it will be like looping between these two and uh, it doesn't which is very cool why it doesn't because one moment it doesn't work because we didn't set the box collider to be trigger and we're actually going to move it to 8 units and negative 8 units so now when we play we can see the magnet is moving if we select the magnet you can see that its new position is changing from negative 7.5 to 7.5 and it will continue this way Okay, so good so far. <coughs> now we need to add one more script to the. One moment. We need to add one more line of code. Actually, we'll do that later. What we have to do now is make our coin or whatever you want. We'll call it coin. We need. Uh, I'm going to move down the sphere collider. I don't. I'm going to reset it to be zero. Adding rigid body. We'll turn off use gravity for now. And we're going to make one script which will be called coin actions C sharp. Okay. Uh, drag it over the sphere. Then select the coin and place it for or in the prefabs folder. So we have it as a prefab. <laughs> now we need to make also a game controller. We're going to come back to the coins uh, in just a bit. Well, we can delete it from the scene so we have it as a prefab let's make one uh, empty game object you can do that by uh, holding control shift and end or just go to the create empty I'm going to reset its transforms and I'm going to call it game manager or game controller I'm going to make a prefab I'll make a new script which will be C sharp and it will be called game controller C sharp. Select the script. You can actually po uh, uh, put the script on the prefab directly. So now the game controller have it as a component. Now here we want to make some it's a small script public variables so we're going to make public game object coin we're going to add the coin here uh, private variables private rigid body coin rigid body in the update function we will say if input that get mouse button down zero which will be the left mouse button 
so if we press the left button we're going to say vector3 mouse position to be equal to input that mouse position we want to get the mouse position uh, what we want to do is when we press somewhere on the screen a coin will, will be spawned so we're going to get the mouse position and now we'll say mouse position uh, since the mouse position is at this on a 2d plane y and x we don't have actually a z-axis so it depth so we have to specify the depth if we don't it will be zero but we don't want to be zero because actually it, it won't be zero it will be the same as the camera is so it will be a negative 20 but we want it to be on the same uh, z-plane where the where the cube is which is zero so we have to do mouse position that z to be equal to 20 so it will be moved at 20 units inside the scene now let's say vector 3 instance position which will be the position of the instance to be equal to camera that mine that uh, screen to world point mouse position this would convert the mouse position to a world units in the scene and then we can say instantiate coin instance position quaternion that identity so we don't need any rotation so now if we press somewhere on the screen yeah we haven't applied the so we're going to say game game controller and we're going to put the coin as the object that we want to instantiate and now when we press on the somewhere on the screen <coughs> they are rigid bodies so it's pretty nice you know? okay everything is cool this is for the game controller we don't need this anymore uh -huh. Okay, in the next part, we'll add the script for the coin and we'll make all the other actions that we need to do. Save the scene and I'll see you soon.